Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today we are going to be repainting the head on a Sideshow Collectibles movie premium format Aquaman statue. Now, somebody contacted me a while back when they did a pre-order on the statue and they said that when the statue comes out, they would really like to redo it into a comic book version uh, head, which means uh, blue eyes, uh, no tattoo on the skin, and blonde hair. So uh, what I did right now is off camera is I pretty much painted the eyes. Uh, with these eyes were big enough where I could get in there with a paintbrush and give them baby blue eyes. Uh, so you can see I got some paints over here. And what I did is I used my magnifying glass uh, lamp right here to kind of go in there and do this stuff. So if you have one of these, it makes your life a lot easier. Got different uh, settings on lights and stuff as well. If it was a smaller head, uh, I would probably just pretty much uh, use eye decals. But this was... Uh, big enough where I can actually get in there with some paint. So I'm going to let the paint set up and then what I'll do is I'll seal them up tonight. Uh, first I'll send pictures to the client, see what he says, and then tomorrow what I could do is I can mask off the eyes and I can uh, do a clear primer over the face and go from there. Now a little tidbit on this type of a head, a lot of factories are doing this and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. This resin is actually uh, like a translucent skin resin. It's pretty much like this color here of resin. So what the factory does is they cast it up. This whole head is probably casted up in this color resin. And then what they did is they did washes around the whole face of paint. And all those washes really bring out a lot of these details and looks really good. Uh, really get a nice, good, like a realistic type of a look. So if you have like a solvent, whether it's like an acetone, uh, a nail polish remover, or maybe even some harsher... Uh, um, airbrush chemicals that are uh, used for cleaning. If you probably ran your finger with a little bit over here, you would probably rub off all the washes and it would look like this skin here, but you would see that they did washes over there. And uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, if that's the type of like statue you like and you like that realistic as close as possible, it almost feels like a Hot Toys uh, head to me. You know, it kind of feels like that type of uh, resin that they use for like Hot Toys and uh, maybe like Prime 1 stuff as well. Uh, but we want to go more uh, comic accurate. So once I mask off the eyes, we're going to take out the tattoos. We're going to repaint the whole face, give them a little bit more brighter comic book look to them. And then when that's, that's done, we're going to do blonde hair. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is going to give me that like, you know, feel of what he would have looked like uh, if he was more of a blonde version for the movie. I liked the movie. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. But the only thing that really bothered me is I wish she was more blonde in the movie. Just because that's what I grew up with, uh, you know, being Aquaman was always blonde. But that's where we're at right now. So hopefully by tomorrow, if everything's okay, uh, we can start painting up the skin. And then uh, we could do the blonde hair. Uh, what I'll try to do is delay the video, though, before I post it. So this way when I send it back to the client, maybe he can send me some pictures. And we can actually get some pictures up in the video what he looks like on the body. Because... With something like this, I don't need the person to send me the whole body with the box and all that. They just send the head and it makes life easier. So uh, we'll see how we get tomorrow and hopefully we can get this done. Okay, going to paint up the head. So uh, what I did is I masked off the eyes with Silly Putty. I gave it a good coating of clear primer from Dupu Color. So this way all the paint should pretty much uh, bond to it pretty well. So if you look at Aquaman in the comic books, he's very pale uh, flesh tone, uh, you know, very fair skin. So... What we're going to do is we'll use Garage Kit uh, Flesh Tones as a base. We'll mix in some uh, Burnt Sienna with that, do some shading. Uh, then we'll do some like uh, transparency to blend that out. Then we got some transparencies of Pale, Bright, and Flesh Wash from P3. And basically I'm just going to keep blending until I get it to where I want. I don't have a set formula of painting skin tone like I've said in many of my videos before. It's just a matter of I keep blending until I get it to where I want it. Uh, if I feel that I need to mix up a special color of uh, skin tones from the start, I will. But for this one, this flesh tone is pretty much perfect for Aquaman, uh, what we're going for. Because you can see, this is kind of more of a tan skin uh, like the movie. And we're going more comic book feel, so we got to kind of brighten it up a lot more. So, I'm just going to keep doing all my layering, get it to where I want it. And then once that's done, we seal it up, let that cure, dull it down, and then we focus on the hair. All right, so what's happening here is uh, the tattoo on his neck. It seems as though they cord they must have uh, put a little bit of a uh, 3D sculpt in there, so this way the factory knew where to paint it. So the part up here is not showing, but these lines over here are showing. And the sad thing is, 
if I sand down a little bit, you know, I'm taking away that texture on the neck, but I don't really want those lines to show. It looks weird. So I'm kind of using a little bit of a rougher sandpaper to see if I can kind of just take those away a little bit and hopefully the paint will fill it in. You know, no amount of primer up there is really going to hide it because you're going to take away the detail and you're not really going to fill in the lines really. So it's just one of those things. So you can see those lines are sort of there. Um, like I said, the front of it didn't really show uh, over here. It's just these lines here. So paint will help hide that though. That's not a problem with the paint. Uh, it just if you were going to do like washing on here and then you sand it down and then you do washing, uh, you might kind of like catch capture all the detail around here. But if you sand it this down, it's smooth. It might look a little off, but that's just the way it works. And now that I'm sanding it down, it's actually white, so maybe it is painted. I don't know. That's a unless it's a primer I'm hitting. I don't know. So it could be a uh, could be white resin and painted. I'm not really sure, but you know we'll hit this with some. Yeah, that, that that's helped. That hides it a lot now. So that kind of really gets it out of there. Uh. Yeah, that kind of took it away. Okay, so that's good. We'll get back to start painting him up because that's uh. That was bothering me there, having seen those two little lines and nothing really else. Alright, so I'm kind of happy with where it's at. I did a couple more blending off camera just to kind of bring in some areas here and there. And I'm not sure how well it can see in the camera. So we have some uh, P3 flesh wash. Uh, what I like to do is use this for uh, male lips. Not go overboard with it, but just enough. Just to give it like a little bit of a pink tint. But not like you know make them red lipstick or anything just enough in there uh this stuff goes a far way uh this stuff is a really great uh wash so that works out pretty well there you just let that dry now the flesh wash works great before you seal this up because it actually really soaks into this garage kit paints uh if you uh try to seal up this paint and go afterwards it's a little bit hard to blend it in um Next step is we have a makeup kit. So I just might try to bring out a couple areas here and there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I'm gonna grab some more uh, pieces. Let's see, we have this one. And this one should work out. There we go. Now, since uh, he's the, we don't really need to go crazy with uh, you know any of the makeup. Just to kind of bring out some areas, nothing too crazy. So we just kind of only because uh, sometimes the airbrush over blends something. So this will kind of help bring out some of those stuff. Trying to keep the wrinkles there, but not take them out too much like that. Going with the uh, can't really even explain the color. I'm just kind of grabbing some. Sometimes I'll use the makeup after I seal it, and sometimes I'll use it before. I'm using it before this time because we don't really don't have a lot of flesh here. But like I said, he is a fair skin character, and we don't want to make him tan. Keep him more toward the comics. Kind of brighten up the ear a little bit by going over it like that. This little piece here. I don't want to go too crazy with shading, so I'm kind of happy with where, uh, you know, it all is right now. Uh, this part over here kind of seems to have a weird detail, so we'll kind of bring it out a little bit more. We'll try to bring out this ear. Now, the only problem with uh, pastels and makeup like this, if you don't seal it, it will come off. So you got to definitely seal it pretty well. So what I like to use is uh, Dupacolor. Uh, clear gloss paint really gloss it up and really keep it really uh, secured and then I dull it down with uh, some uh, mecha varnish flat so this way 
you know, it, it really seals the skin in case, you know, you pop the head in and out and you hit it with your nail and stuff. Because uh, Garage Kit's flesh toned uh, paints are not that durable. Uh, it's, they're great for paint, like, say if you're painting up an item and you paint it and it's not a removable item like a change head. So since this is an item where you might grab it with your finger here, you might grab it underneath here or here, you really want it to be durable. If it's just an item that you're going to put up on your shelf and never really remove parts, uh, the garage kit stuff works out very well. But like most paints, um, you got to really let them cure and you got to know how durable they are. With a lot of removable pieces, there's nothing really you can do. They're going to get all messed up if you remove them and touch them all the time. But, I think that's pretty good. Uh, something like this, I like to let cure up for the night just to be on the safe side. Because like, well, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll have fresh eyes on it if I need to do anything else if I don't like it. Plus, uh, what I'll do is I'll take some, try to take some nice pictures and send it to the client tonight. And uh, go from there. It's always hard to flesh tone until you start adding all the hair colors and you pull off and you see the eyes and all that. It comes together. But right now I'm pretty sure I'm. Uh, this is where we want it to be. So it's a lot brighter. We got some details. Uh, so yeah, so we'll let this dry out for the night. Really let it cure before I even go any further. Uh, I'll take some pictures and hopefully tomorrow I could kind of seal it up dull it down and start focusing on the hair unless we want anything changed between now and then. Okay, so uh, what I did is I pulled off the silly putty off the eyes and I pretty much just worked out some paint with some brown paint mixed with some skin tone and I just kind of like uh, worked out the eyelids a little bit better because when you mask off the eyes and you just spray uh, just basic paint you really don't have any of that like you know eyelashes, dark stuff around your eyes, the pinks and stuff like that. So I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit and just uh, went and fixed up around there. So it looks a little bit more serious now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is remask the eyes with some Silly Putty. And then we're going to go over to the airbrush booth and we're going to seal up the skin. So this way we can start focusing on the hair once the skin and everything's all set up. Alright, so uh, the head is all sealed up now and we're ready to start working on the hair. So... What I'm going to do is I got some yellow, some uh, raw sienna, some uh, flesh tone paint because I like to mix flesh tone paint in with the hair to brighten up instead of like white or anything like that. And then uh, what I'll do is I'm going to work out the lines around the hair, work out the beard, eyebrows and stuff. We're going with a dirty blonde hair. We're not going like bright blonde. We're not going like really dark blonde. We're going to try to find that middle ground. So I'll start working out a little bit around here and if the client likes where we're going I could go ahead and finish the rest of the hair. Uh, but I'm just going to try to build it up slowly. I don't want to go overboard with it. Uh, only because, uh, like with yellow hair, you could go from one extreme to the other real fast. So i got to try to be careful with that. Um, and also, it's such a hard line up here. There's literally not many, like, indentations with this hair. It's like a very hard line. And I guess what the factory did is they sort of blend it out with, like, an airbrush afterwards. So I don't know how far I'll go with that later, but we'll see how we blend that out. But for right now... I'll just keep working out everything else. All right, we're going to start painting up the hair. Uh, so I went back and forth with the client. We're going to try to go a little bit more dirty or blonde with some a uh, little bit of brown washes into the hair and stuff like that. So uh, what I did right now is I masked off the face and I just gave a nice good coating of like uh, yellows, uh, burnt uh, raw sienna, and uh, some of a uh, flesh tone on there. So what I'm going to do is try to kind of go back with the yellow and try to blend out some of the hair and then after that I might have to go in with a paintbrush and really do some washes of some like leather tan into it to really let some of this like 
uh, dirty brown kind of like bleed into some of these crevices and uh, streaks and stuff like that. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't want to really do dry brushing. I'd rather do washes on this because the dry brushing will be kind of hard to get into some of these areas, whereas the wash will kind of flow into those areas a little bit easier. Okay, so I uh, did some touch-ups on this and I sent some pictures to the client and what they wanted is a little bit more of a dirtier blonde and a little bit more browns in the hair, which is fine. You know, like I said, we're always different. We always want different things on our shelves. So instead of trying to go in there and force some colors and repaint it all, the good thing about having hair like this is do washes. So this is some transparency leather uh, from Garage Kit Colors and that was just easy to kind of just do some nice misting around the hair and just kind of start darkening it up by this way the highlights of all the yellow started to get toned down a little bit more and all the darker areas started getting darker so that's a good thing about transparencies and washes so we did it in the beard we did it in the eyebrows and we did it around the hair so i let it dry for about a day and a half now just to kind of i didn't want to keep handling the hair while the paint was sort of there and maybe a little bit uh still wet so it's pretty much cured up now and it's looked pretty good but we have sort of a shine to it so I just got to kind of dull down the hair a little bit with some of the matte varnish. Just get in there and dull it down. And then what's going to happen is uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'll just go over it one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. And then uh, we'll go into the uh, photo studio. We'll look at it a little bit better. And then hopefully by then uh, the client will have some pictures sent to me with it on the statue. And we can see what it really looks like. So these are just one of those videos where I'll kind of delay posting it until I can get some pictures from the client. Uh, so I think it'll look a lot better to see him actually on the statue. Okay, so here he is all finished up. Uh, I sent some pictures to the client. We went back and forth. We changed up a few things. We cleaned up some areas. Uh, I toned everything down with some nice flat coat. And we are pretty much ready to go. So this is going to look really cool once it's on the statue. So hopefully, like I said, by the time I put up the video, I'll have uh, the picture in hand of what it looks like on the statue so we can see it side by side of me explaining it now because I'm really, you know, curious to see how this works out. But, you know, like I always tell people, it's a, uh, statues is a great hobby. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking a statue and changing up some paints or eye colors, hair color, uh, customizing and do whatever you want just to make something a nice one of a kind. So this should look pretty cool once it's in his display case. And like I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this looks. Uh, I had a lot of fun working on it. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with some more videos.